We have the president of the CFA Institute with us, Margaret Franklin. Uh, thank you so much, Margaret, for coming down to India and coming to our studios here at CNBC TV 18. Well, thank you so much for having me be here. How many candidates appear for the CFA exams every year and how many of them come in from India? Yeah, so about 300,000 candidates will write um, around the globe across the three levels. And here in India, uh, we have about 35,000 candidates and India has just become uh, the number one market for new level one candidates. So it's a growing market for us. It's a very important market for us. And I think that reflects the ambitions, the skills and uh, the opportunities here in India. Well, you speak to a lot of uh, investors, analysts and the people from the community itself. What have their thoughts on India been so far as an investment destination. The world's calling this to be the decade of India. Yeah, uh, that's kind of apparent to see right through three different lenses. One is moving from an outsourced um, provider to really um, global capacity centers of excellence. And we've seen that in our meetings here over the last few days where leaders in some of the world's um, largest investment firms in particular are looking at the whole skill stack. So what was originally an economic or price uh, arbitrage has really become a talent arbitrage. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that really the opportunities here are quite significant, both um, from an infrastructure perspective and as India, now the world's largest population, builds out its infrastructure, there's extraordinary um, investment opportunities and as India um, exports its investment opportunities. So we see this market as important from providing talent and skills for the industry broadly and then the investment opportunities that are here. Well, you know, when you speak about the CFA program, the kind of tools that it equips one for, it's a lot of it is, apart from evaluation of companies, it's also the quality of earnings that you all focus yeah. on. So of the companies that you would have seen here in India, what's your sense of the kind of reportage that there is in India so far? Well, I think that there's a couple of areas of focus that we certainly um, see in motion. The first is better disclosure, corporate disclosures, better um, reporting, and that's critical, right? In if you're not in domestic market, you really do rely on those yeah. financial um, those financial reports. What are the places where you think it can get better? Um, I think uh, obviously disclosures are always can always be um, improved. Here we see um, certainly sustainability reporting being a much more critical factor, and so those become really important for companies to evaluate on a future perspective how um, material matters, think about water security, think about the impact of pollution, uh, supply chain disruption as a result of, in particular, climate as a good example, how those impact earnings qualities going forward. Uh, is that becoming a big factor more and more as an investment uh, variable to look at? Can that be a deal breaker if the ESG is not good? It is, and it's an interesting um, dimension to investing because we don't have a ton of data and we don't have a playbook to readily pull off the shelf because this is a global phenomenon and in 2023 there wasn't one part of the world that wasn't touched by climate so we don't have historical data we don't necessarily have the historical playbooks what, what is this project that you are building with the NSE right now so it's the um, the board responsibility and sustainability reporting it's with a thousand companies and it is really laying out the parameters that they should be reporting on and in what manner and that reliability, transparency, and comparability becomes critical for investment managers, security analysts, portfolio managers to be able to make investment decisions and capital allocation decisions. A lot has changed in the last yeah. few years when it comes to you know valuing companies, the nature of companies itself. Some of them loss making, some of them looking at you know a long runway of growth, and some of them actually having moved a lot higher in terms of price valuation as well, which do not fit in the traditional metrics uh, of valuation, how, how, how have you updated your course to yeah. factor all of those things in? Well, surprisingly, there are concepts and frameworks that endure across time, right? At the end of the day, an analyst is trying to figure out what is the future cash flows, what's the discount rate that you apply to that, and then what's the price derived from that in this very moment, and is there an opportunity for, um, you know, you're buying it from a value perspective or a growth perspective? and really um, different, if we think about technology as a really good example, you'll see that they have really high price to earnings multiples. That's because they're growing really fast. These are disruptive technologies in many cases, and you can start to see a totally different um, PE 
uh, PE applied to it, but the actual valuation methodologies remain largely the same, and that's the part for the analysts to get in there and to understand how are these companies going to go grow differently, for instance, than a retail company or a food company. And how about artificial intelligence? Uh, uh, how are you all using that to leverage, you know, analyst analytics and all of that? Yeah, so we've just completed some fairly significant research in artificial intelligence. One, how it's going to impact the industry, and then for our own selves, like many companies, how do we apply um, AI to be able to improve productivity or to advance, accelerate, or augment our strategy? With regards to the industry, what we see is that in the very short term, um, artificial intelligence probably really augments and enhances the capabilities of analysts and portfolio managers. And why is that? Because now we have much better data sets and, and that's going to keep increasing and the ability to process that data in a much more um, efficient and effective way. So what could have taken months to do now takes seconds. And what that really does is change the nature of the investment al an analyst or capital allocator from doing perhaps more mundane rote work to looking out the other side and thinking more critically about the right questions to ask, questions that we couldn't even have answered effectively before. So I think it's actually a really exciting time. Um, our research shows that very early on, uh, client, product, client insights and productivity is a great area for technology to play a big part. Certainly more data, uh, process more quickly on the investment side there is equally enough attention being played to the implications and ethics around AI. So I think that is very unsettled at this point. What are the new things that uh, the CFA program has added right now? And is the big C word cryptocurrency anywhere yeah. close to that? Yeah. Well, cryptocurrency, we've actually done quite a bit of research on. And we'll use examples of new and emerging asset classes within, again, the traditional, how do you value them using the techniques that we teach in the CFA program? Um, we uh, launched our most significant enhancements to the CFA program over this last year. We researched significantly with employers. What are they looking for from candidates? And then what do candidates need to be successful? So the three most important um, changes that we made to the CFA program is one is to make it eligible for university students. Mm -hmm. We know that candidates are using it to get their first job, which may be at in my case, we already had jobs and everybody was writing it. So students are using it to get their first jobs. Um, the second was employers told us that they wanted candidates with more practical skills to be more job ready. And so we've introduced practical skills modules. They're 10 to 15 hour digital um, courses. The candidates aren't tested on them, but they must complete them. And uh, level one is financial modeling and Python. Level two is research analysis and advanced um, Python. So these are quite exciting uh, modules and actually our members um, who've already passed their charter are looking forward to them. And then um, the third uh, a feature that we put in was we know that candidates really wanted to have some level of specialization. So in level three, we introduced what could look like an elective for half of their level three. So classic portfolio management, private wealth or private markets. And of course, those are two uh, burgeoning parts of the business globally, but here in India, of course, very, very um, explosive. Since you're speaking to the exchanges on releasing data and reports and all of that, is a course specific to India in the works? Uh, we don't have one right now, um, but we actually have invested heavily in our ability to customize and create courses. So I won't be surprised if over the next 18 to 24 months, we have a number of courses that are specific to India. And as an Indian, I will ask this question because we're growing so much yeah. in terms of proportion for the CFA Institute as well. Yeah. How do you get the prices down? <laughs> oh, this is a classic uh, question that we get all the time here. So three things that we've done actually to make the CFA program more accessible and more affordable. First of all, we've um, tripled the number of test centers that we have. And so we'll be at 26, I think, by the end of this year. And that means candidates don't have to travel so much. I, I, I would remark here in Mumbai, actually getting from one end of the city <laughs> to the other is quite a feat. Um, the second thing is to provide a monthly installment plan. So people who can't afford that um, upfront cost can do that uh, through a monthly program. And then for those who really do have the economic need, we have um, a number of scholarships that we provide here. So between scholarships, monthly installment plan, and increased accessibility through the test centers, we think we've got it pretty good. 